Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In this video, we are going to talk about the intrinsic thumb muscles. If you want to check out all my notes, you can check it out over here on my Instagram in this particular sections where all of them are specifically organized. So don't forget to check them out and let's get started. So today we are going to cover the intrinsic thumb muscles. Intrinsic meaning they are present inside your hand, right? They don't cross the wrist joint and come to your thumb. So they originate from your hand and then insert at the thumb somewhere near thumb so that movement at the thumb is possible. What are the muscles? There is opponent's pollicis that is OP, flexa pollicis brevis flexa meaning causing flexion over here opponents meaning it causes opposition movement we have explored this movement in the in previous kinematics of cmc joints and the mcp joints so you can check it out then there is flexa pollicis brevis flexa means it causes flexion pollicis is another name for thumb and brevis means a short one that is a smaller brother of flexa pollicis longus and over here we'll mostly see brevises because it's intrinsic muscles right so they are all smaller muscles then there is abductor pollicis brevis causes abduction at pollicis and it's a small muscle and then adductor pollicis which causes adduction of the thumb so these are the muscles apart from that we have also two interosseae volar and dorsal interosseae which we will cover later so now that we have covered the name Let's move on to the attachment. So most of these intrinsic muscles, they start from your flexa retinaculum. So that is something you have to keep in mind. And their attachment, the opponent's pollicis is attached to the first metacarpal, that is basically the metacarpal of your thumb. And it is attached perpendicular to it, so that it helps in a position movement. And apart from this, if you see all the other intrinsic muscles their attachment is all proximal phalanx so that they can carry about the movement at the thumb right so those are their attachment now moving on to the function the first muscle opponent's pollicis main function of opponent's pollicis is it puts mcp in a certain position that is abduction flexion and rotation okay this is its main function let's have a look at this so before we discuss about the function of your thumb let us see how your hand is positioned right see this is the hand and thumb is if you can see it's slightly in flexion adduction and slightly in rotation right it is it's not outward like this it's slightly rotated in so that is the position and this position of metacarpal over here if you can see this is present because of the muscles that is that are pulling especially the opponents which is perpendicular and it's kind of pulling it inside so if you see the pull of the opponents will be somewhat like this perpendicular to your metacarpal right so that is what i have mentioned over here now before we move ahead i think we'll just revise the movements first so this is your abduction this is your adduction this is flexion and this is extension correct and opponents is what abduction flexion adduction right that's your uh, opponents movement com combination of all the three movements now let us move on to the next part so we have covered the opponents policies right their attachment position Another thing that opponents does is opposition to the little finger. So when there is opposition, so if I have to show you this, this is called as the opposition, right? Opposition to different fingers. So it is seen that the opposition to this finger, this finger, this finger and this finger, the activity of the muscle slightly changes. There is variation in one opponents will do more activity in other flexor will do more activity flexor pollicis brevis right so that is what we are going to discuss over here in the little finger however it's pure opponents opponents muscle does the most activity 
and in index and middle finger opponents won't do as much of activity but flexor will dominate it so we'll have a look at it right now so as we come to flexor pollicis brevis we know that it is distally attached to proximal phalanx but how it is attached is very interesting it has two heads the lateral head goes and attaches to the abductor pollicis brevis this muscle over here and the medial head goes and attaches to the adductor pollicis brevis that is this head and both of them you know they go and attach to proximal pharynx so eventually it lands up at proximal pharynx but it goes to the proximal pharynx through these muscle attachment right so that is something which is very interesting now about the movement the flexor pollicis brevis again it crosses the sesamoid bone at the mcp and this increases its momentum and as it crosses and goes and attaches the action of flexor pollicis brevis is it helps in opposition to index finger and middle finger with little help of opponent's pollicis right so if you see all of the muscles are covered only ring finger is left so what happens in ring finger in the ring finger flexor pollicis brevis and opponent's pollicis both of them work equally so let's summarize this part quickly so what have we understood till now as we move from index finger right to your ring finger the opposition right from index to middle finger to ring finger and to little finger here these two are dominated by flexor pollicis brevis with little help of your opponent's pollicis the ring finger has equal amount of opponent's pollicis and flexor pollicis brevis activity and little finger is dominated by opponent's pollicis so this is the pattern that is seen at the opposition movement but apart from it there is also abductor and adductor pollicis brevis right these muscles are also present so what is their function they also have some amount of activity in this movement and we will look at it now so the abductor pollicis brevis what it does is because its attachment is at the proximal phalanx it works with opponent's pollicis and flexor pollicis brevis both of them during the opposition movement throughout right whereas adductor pollicis brevis what it does its major activity the high activity is present when the opposition is very firm that means when i press the press the two fingers really hard that is my thumb and the index finger and say thumb and the little finger when i press it really hard that's when the adduction is happening a lot right and that's when the very high activity of opponents of adductor pollicis is seen at the thumb and what does this help it helps in stabilizing the thumb so that is its primary function so now that we have covered all the intrinsic thumb muscles let's move on to other two muscles those are the interosseous dorsal and volar interosseous so here we have the volar and dorsal interosseous Cynthia Norkins hasn't mentioned much about the volar interosseous so i just thought i'll mention about the attachments and we'll move on to the dorsal one so volar interosseous it arises from the first metacarpal and attaches to your ulnar sesamoid bone and it also has attachment distally to proximal phalanx just like your other thenar muscles right these are not considered as your thenar muscles okay now going on to the dorsal interosseous this is very interesting it is a bipinnate muscle so as you can see over here there are two attachments over here which are dividing and this is a bipinnate muscle and it originates from your first second metacarpal and also your intercarpal ligament so you can see this is your first metacarpal second metacarpal that's where it originates from and also the these are the carpal so intercarpal ligaments are present over here right between the carpal bones so that intercarpal ligament from there this is how it originates and if you can see its pull it's pulling this direction right it's pulling when the muscle will contract it will pull in this direction upward so it will kind of cause distraction at the cmc joint so that is its main function cmc joint distraction 
and also it offsets this compression that might occur during pinching and power grip that happens in your hand. What are these grips? This part I will cover in the next video of prehension where we will have all these concepts cleared out. Okay. So now we'll just move on to the last part and finish off with the topic that is the thumb musculature function. Now that we have realized that there are extrinsic and intrinsic thumb muscles, we'll look at the function of these muscles. So the first function is positioning of the metacarpal for efficient functioning like opposition, right? So if you can see, as I mentioned before, the metacarpal in, is positioned in certain way through the tension that is created by these muscles, correct? So positioning of the metacarpal in such a way so that thumb movement is optimal and easy to do is the first function of your thumb musculature. And this helps in the opposition movement itself. Then if you see, if we grasp something, if we grasp one object and if I'm dropping it, while dropping thumb extension is very important and this is done by your extrinsic, mostly the extrinsic muscles of your thumb. So that is the second function, the major function of thumb that is extension or release of the object. So let's go back and see. So second part was extension, release of object, which is done mostly by extrinsic muscle. And first one was the positioning of the metacarpal for efficient functioning with opposition, which we saw just now in the previous video, opposition to different fingers uh, having different muscle activity, right? So with that, we finish off this topic. Now let's quickly summarize. So first we saw all these muscles, opponent's policies main function was keeping the metacarpal in position and opposition to little finger. Flexor pollicis brevis, its main function was opposition to index finger and middle finger with little help of opponent's policies. And it had two heads which, uh, which were attaching to abductor pollicis brevis and adductor pollicis brevis. And it had a higher moment arm because it crosses the sesamoid bone. Abductor pollicis brevis works with FPB and OP throughout the all the range of motions and adductor pollicis brevis has high activity during firm adduction or opposition movement, right? Under interosseae, we discussed volar and dorsal interosseae and dorsal interosseae specifically, they believe to have a very important function of distraction at your CMC joint, which plays a major role. And, the up and apart from this role, the thumb muscles have function of positioning the metacarpal so that opposition and other movements are easily done with very good efficiency and also extension for the release of object by the extrinsic in thumb muscles predominantly. So with that, we finish off this topic. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching.